Thanks, Mark, and I'm Randy Hansen. In today's World News Headlines, Julian Assange calls on the U.S. to end war on whistleblowers. And U.S. drone strike kills 13 in Pakistan. And the last U.N. monitors withdraw from Syria. And Obama and Ryan trade barbs on Medicare plans. And Ryan backs stimulus spending in 2002. And GOP Senate candidate says women can't avoid pregnancy and legitimate rape. And Kansas prosecutors drop Planned Parenthood case and striking minors face deadline days after mass slayings. An Afghan officer kills two U.S. soldiers. And government forces kill young protester in Bahrain. GVTV News is broadcast on Grass Valley Television, a division of Aurora County's television network whose focus is on community involvement, and we also air on NCTV. But for these stories, GVTV News would like to thank one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GVTV News. In today's first world news story, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange emerged from inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London on Sunday with a defiant speech from near the embassy's balcony. Assange spoke days after Ecuador granted him political asylum, prompting Britain to deny him safe passage out of the country. In a nine-minute address to the media and supporters of WikiLeaks, Assange called on President Obama to abandon what he described as a war on whistleblowers. And he said, I asked President Obama to do the right thing. The United States must renounce its witch hunt against WikiLeaks. The United States must dissolve its FBI investigation. The United States must vow that it will not seek to prosecute our staff or our supporters. The United States must pledge before the world that it will not pursue journalists for shining a light on the secret crimes of the powerful. Unquote. At least 13 people were killed over the weekend in three separate U.S. drone attacks inside Pakistan. Attack came as Pakistanis celebrated the end of the holy Muslim month of Ramadan. The United States says its drone strike targets militants, but the Obama administration policy is to deem all adult male victims as militants unless exculpatory evidence emerges after their deaths. And the last UN monitors to have withdrawn from Syria, marking the end of a four-month mission. The mission announced its dissolution last week amidst unrelenting violence between government and rebel forces. Earlier the other day, the Syrian regime launched a new assault to retake the Damascus suburb of Mordamiya, or I think it's Mordamiya. On Sunday, Syrian President Bashir al-Assad attended services in Damascus Mosque in his first public appearance since the bomb attack killed top members of the cabinet last month. United Nations, meanwhile, has confirmed veteran Algerian diplomat Lakhdar Brahimi is the new international mediator for Syria, replacing Kofi Annan. UN spokesperson Eduardo El Dobe uh, announced that appointment, and he said, The violence and the suffering of Syria must come to an end. The Secretary General appreciates Mr. Bahraini's willingness to bring his considerable talents and experience to this crucial task in which he need and rightly expects a strong, clear, and a unified support of the international community, including the Security Council. Doesn't do much. President Obama continues to evoke the record of newly announced Republican vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan on the campaign trail. On Saturday, Obama compared the signature health care law to Ryan's proposal to turn Medicare into a voucher program. And President Obama said, so here's the bottom line. My plan saves money in Medicare by cracking down on fraud and waste and insurance company subsidies. And their plan makes seniors pay more so they can give another tax cut to millionaires and billionaires. You'd think they'd avoid talking about Medicare, given the fact that both of them have proposed to voucherize the Medicare system. 
Republicans have accused Obama of slashing more than $700 billion from the Medicare, even though the cuts actually come from insurers and providers. Speaking in Florida, Ryan rejected charges he seeks to gut Medicare, citing his family's personal experience and said, when I think about Medicare, it's not just a program, it's not just a bunch of numbers, it's what my mom relies on. Medicare was there for our family, for my grandma, and we need it then. Medicare is there for my mom while she needs it now, and we have to keep that guidance, guarantee. As Paul Ryan seeks to distance himself from his previous proposals on Medicare, a new video has emerged showing another apparent reversal on major policy issues. In a 2002 speech in the House floor during debates on economic stimulus, Ryan forced fully backed government intervention to stimulate the economy and help the unemployed. Vision video was unearthed by MSNBC's Chris Hayes. Paul Ryan had said that. What we're trying to accomplish is to pass the kinds of legislation that when they're passed in the past have grown the economy and gotten people back to work. We want to make it easier for employees to keep people employed. We want to make it easier for employers to invest in their business, to invest in their employees and hire people back to work. On top of that, people have lost their jobs. We want to help them with their unemployment insurance, with health insurance. And what we're trying to accomplish here is recognition of the fact that in recessions, unemployment lags on even well after recovery has taken place, which it hasn't so far taken place, that is. A Republican Congress member running for the Senate in Missouri was, has sparked national outrage for comments of rape and abortion. Asked by a reporter why he opposed abortion, even in the case of rape, Representative Todd Aiken said the case is what he called legitimate rape. Women can somehow block a pregnancy from taking place. Poirier said, what about in case of rape, should it be legal or not? And Todd Aiken said, well, you know, people always want to try and make that as one of those things. Well, how do you? How do you slice this particularly tough sort of ethical question? It seems to me, first of all, that what I understand from doctors that's really rare, it is a legitimate rape. Female body has ways to shut that whole thing down. But let's assume that maybe it didn't work or something, you know. I think there should be some punishment. But the punishment ought to be on the rapist, not and not attacking the child. Aiken is six-term member of the Congress and the Tea Party backed in his race to unseat Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill. He later issued a statement saying he misspoke last year. Aiken supported a Republican measure that called for permanently barring federal abortion funding, allowing exceptions only in cases that deemed forcible rape. Prosecutors in Kansas have dropped the nation's first criminal prosecution and reproductive health service group Planned Parenthood, ending a five-year ordeal. Planned Parenthood affiliate in Kansas and mid-Missouri were faced in charges of failing to assess the viability of fetuses before abortions, although most of the charges had already been dismissed. Prosecutors announced on Friday that they were dropping the entire case. Striking workers at South African mine were where police shot dead 34 people last week faced a deadline to return to work today or face, well, this was the other day, or face losses of their jobs. Victims were killed more than a week after walking off the job at Maracana Platinum Mine owned by Lonman, the world's third largest producer of plutonium. Police said they shot after workers armed with machetes ignored calls to disperse, but the workers' union says the police committed a massacre. In response, South African President Jacob Zuma announced a week of national mourning as well as formation of a commission of inquiry. He said, I decided to institute a commission of inquiry. The inquiry will enable us to get to the real cause of the incident to derive the necessary lessons, too. However, today is not an occasion of blame, finger-pointing, or recrimination. Today challenges, today challenges us to restore calm and to share the pain of the affected families and communities. Shooting marked the worst mass killing in South Africa since the end of the apartheid. The head of the South African Association of Mine Workers and Construction Unions said it evoked memories of the Sharpeville Massacre of 1960. One of them said, I thought the history that I read from Sharpeville, Moscow was a history. I never thought that 2012 we would experience the same massacre under democratic elected government by ourselves. This is a shame. And two U.S. soldiers were killed in Afghanistan on Friday when a member of the Afghan police force opened fire. It was the latest of a spat of shootings by members of Afghan forces against the U.S.-led NATO occupation. NATO spokesperson announced, uh, spokesperson announced the attack. Gunter Kott said this morning in the Farah province, a member of Afghan local police shot two American soldiers, killing them, and the guy, the shooter, has been killed as well. The investigation is still ongoing. We have no 
findings yet in terms of the reason for this insider threat incident and what it was. And protests against U.S.-backed monarchy in Bahrain continue over the weekend, led by at least one death. A 16-year-old demonstrator was killed on Friday in what activists called a brutal attack by the Bahraini police. Victim Hussam al-Haddad was reportedly shot before being assaulted by police in civilian clothes. His death came days after the prominent Bahraini human rights activist Nabil Rajab was sentenced to three years in prison. And that's it for World News Today. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GV TV News. Soundcheck Music Center, the rock and roll connection. We have guitars, amps, drum equipment, sound accessories, lessons, and repairs. We are located at 671 Maltman Drive, Grass Valley, 530-272-7236, open seven days a week. No one needs anyone, they don't even just pretend. Jonas and America. I'm afraid of America. I'm afraid of the world. I'm afraid I can't. I'm afraid of Americans. I'm afraid of the world. I'm afraid of That's America. right, it's time for the police blotter and pictures in the blotter, not from these actual events, but used for visual aid only. These public records are obtained from daily logs issued from Nevada County Law Enforcement, Grass Valley Police Department, on Thursday, 8.20 a.m. A report was taken from 300 block of Bennett Street of an ongoing issue with transients hopping a fence. 9.16 a.m., a report was taken from Freeman Lane of a shoplifter. 11.01 a.m., a report was taken to McKnight Way of a man holding his father against his will. The report was unfounded. And 11.26 a.m., a man from 400 block of East Main Street reported driving off from gas pump with the pump still attached to his vehicle. His, he exchanged information with the business. At 12.18 p.m., a report was taken from North Star Mining Museum of five men taking artifacts and throwing them in the creek. They had been throwing rocks and were advised against trespassing. At 2.34 p.m., a report was taken from 200 block of Sutton Way of finding a syringe. At 6.39 p.m., a report was taken from 1,000 block of Plaza Drive of two men threatening customers. One was arrested on suspicion of being under the influence of a controlled substance, and the other was arrested on suspicion of violating post-release community supervision. At 7.16 p.m., a report was taken from 300 block of Bennett Street of two men camping who were belligerent when confronted. At 7.38 p.m., approximately 10 juveniles were contacted at Hennessy School while they were trying to hop a fence. They were advised the school was closed. At 7.38 p.m., a report was taken from Memorial Park of an extremely drunken man on a bicycle. At 7.59 p.m., a caller from 200 block of Race Street reported the man was causing a disturbance. He said he was returning to his camp. At 8.29 p.m., a caller from 100 block of Colfax East reported a man on a bicycle harassing people. And Friday, 12.02 a.m., a report was taken from Nevada City Highway of a man asking customers if they wanted to buy drugs. He was arrested on suspicion of possession of a controlled substance and drug paraphernalia, as well as violating probation. At 5.48 p a.m., a report was taken from 100 block of Neal Street of a man looking in windows and backs of trucks. He was advised to leave. In Nevada County Sheriff's Office on Thursday. 8.39 a.m. A man from 14,000 block of Greenwood Circle reported being scammed via email. At 11.10 a.m., a man from 18,000 block of Joseph Drive reported vandalism to brakes on his vehicle. At 11.34 a.m., a report was taken from the 19,000 block of McCourtney Road of a landlord ripped the phone from a wall. The situation was mediated. At 12.59 p.m., a report was taken from 14,000 block of Highway 174 of a burglary to a shed. At 4.41 p.m., a report was taken from Labar Meadow Road of a theft of auto parts. At 4.49 p.m., a woman of, from Lark Street reported a cleaning business had been using her phone number. At 8.33 p.m., a report was taken from 21,000 block of Gill Court of a fight. The parties were separated at 9.58 p.m., a caller reported a neighbor screaming both parties were going to bed. 8.43 p.m., a report was taken from Bennett Street 
of yelling from the transit camp at second call reported someone yelling for help at 9 10 p.m a man was arrested on suspicion of possessing a controlled substance 9 41 p.m a woman was from the 10,000 block of carriage road reported two horses in a yard that do not belong to her in nevada city police department on thursday 8 14 p.m a report was taken from ridge road and zion street of a man carrying a large machete pushing a bicycle he could not be located and that's it for the blotter today now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in nevada county that's right it's us gv tv news Christopher's Old World Deli and Catering Company has brought its delicious food and service downtown Grass Valley. Like desserts? They got them. You like international style lunches? They got them. Christopher's Deli and Catering for parties, get togethers, weddings, or whatever. Open seven days a week. In today's local news headlines, follow up special roving reporter Juan Brown from Florida and Diane Naniad chases longtime Cuba, Florida dream swim and domestic abuse suspect escapes sheriff deputies. And now for something completely different. Diane, where are you? Hey Randy, I'm here in Miami Beach, Florida, where today folks are quietly celebrating the somber anniversary of Hurricane Andrew. It was 20 years ago today that Hurricane Andrew barreled into the area and took out of the, took off the map uh, Homestead, Florida. Pretty much wiped it right off the face of the earth. Um, but today, Homestead is pretty well rebuilt, and uh, the newspapers are proclaiming or asking the question, can we handle such a disaster today given our current economic climate? But the human spirit perseveres. And speaking of perseverance, just today, about 100 miles south of my course uh, here, Diane Nyad is attempting her third shot at swimming all the way from Havana, Cuba to Miami, Florida. About a 100 mile swim. This is her third attempt. She figures it'll take her about 60 hours. She's now uh, 63 years old. She has done this long distance swimming before. 30 years ago, she successfully swam from the Bahamas tier to Florida. But that was 30 years ago. So she's en route right now. She's 12 miles into her swim. She's got a crew of about 50 folks helping her out, including some shark handlers to gently nudge the sharks away from her. She's got a new swimsuit to prevent the jellyfish from attacking her like uh, that. what happened the last time. So we'll keep a close eye on Diane Nyad here in Miami Beach and see if she can make the nearly 100-mile swim from Havana, Cuba to the Florida Keys. Reporting from South Beach or Miami Beach, Florida, this is your roving reporter Juan Brown for NCTV GVTV News. She went that way! <laughs> She went that way! <laughs> Thanks, Juan. And in our follow-up story from Associated Press, written by Peter Orsi, out of Havana, American Diana Niad endured several jellyfish stings as 60-year-old endurance athlete sought to become the first person to swim unaided from Cuba to Florida without a wetsuit or a shark cage. Team member posted on Niad's Twitter account that the American was steadily stroking onward early Sunday despite jellyfish stings to the lips, feet, and legs. Her goal to become the first person to set the 103-mile, 166-kilometer unaided crossing of the Florida Straits. There are so many jellyfish, said one of the tweets, adding Diana is swimming backstroke right now, leading with the cap-covered part of her head to minimize contact. While well, sharks were among Niad's concerns along the potentially treacherous currents and surprising weather changes, jellyfish that tend to surface at night were a worry, her team signaled. Another tweet said there were jellyfish particles everywhere in the water as Niad swam through the night. The tweet added that the backstroke is working. 
Nied, who is less than a week shy of her 63rd birthday, jumped into the warm waters near Havana on Saturday in her latest bid to make the crossing since last summer, when first an asthma attack and then jellyfish stings forced her to abandon separate attempts. Australian Susie Maroney used a cage when she swam across the straits in Florida in 1997. Just before departing Saturday afternoon, Nia had spoken on how the monotony and the sensory deprivation of marathon swimming is the most intense at night, leading the, the mind down contemplative paths. I do enjoy when I stop in the middle of the night and I see stars, you start thinking out there, she said, it becomes very metaphysical. You're tired and you've been having this metronomic stroke taking you into a different world all of a sudden you're out there and you're thinking about the meaning of life and the grandeur of the universe and the mysteries of it all there will be less time for introspect breaks this trip however as shifting forecasts showed Niad's windows of flat calm seas threatened to slam shut a day earlier than expected that forces the go time to move, be moved up nearly 15 hours to saturday afternoon instead of around dawn sunday a time which had been chosen to minimize Niad's exposure to jellyfish that tend to surface more at night a member of Niad's team spoke on it, the initial meth message on her Twitter account late Saturday saying the swimmer had been stung on the neck by a flower hat jellyfish. Second sting was the lips, a later tweet said. Third and fourth stings to the hand and forehead came from box jellyfish, the more dangerous variety that frustrated her last attempt. This time, Nia had, had hoped for custom-made swimsuit would protect her from the stings. It covered her head from head to toe with a pantyhose face and holes only for the eyes, nose, and the mouth. A kayak-borne apparatus shadowed her in the water, creating a faint electrical field designed to repel most of the sharks, and a team of handlers were on alert to dive in and gently nudge away any that make it through. Deeply tanned with freckles and goggle eyes with long hours training in the sun, Niad admitted to the minor case of nerves before departing Saturday, but she sounded confident. I feel really excited, she said. I respect this. I know how difficult it is. There's a reason no one's ever done it, but I'm prepared. I may suffer some, but I'm prepared to do that. Niad had been training for three years, Stoll said. She had had a good 24-hour practice swim last week. We are in peak shape, Stoll said. Niad's team expected it would take at least 60 hours to complete the swim to the Florida Keys. In June, Australian endurance swimmer Penny Palfrey made it 79 miles towards Florida before throwing in the towel in the face of strong currents. A fiercely driven competitor, Niad acknowledged it was hard to watch Palfrey come close to snatching away her long-held goal. If she had succeeded, I would have congratulated her because I know how difficult it is more than anybody. And after all, this is not my ocean, Niad said. It is my dream. Frankly, how can I lie? I'm glad that I still have the chance to be first. Niad also tried to swim the straits in 28-year-old in 1978 with the aid of a shark cage, but fell short. Speaking with reporter Saturday, Niad would not rule out another attempt before this one, should this one fail, but she seemed to acknowledge that even she has her limits. This Cuba limits. swim obsession of mine dating back to 1978 is at the last horizon, she wrote in an essay. We'll keep you posted. A Penn Valley woman was able to kick her way to freedom on Friday. Nevada County Sheriff Keith Royal says deputies were called in service station in Penn Valley early Friday. Victim said his girlfriend had hit him several times in the face. Sheriff says when deputies went to the home of Lake Wildwood, 22-year-old Jamie Palmer less than was less than cooperative. Palmer was taken into custody and put into the back of a patrol car. Palmer found near the home was taken back into custody. This time she was charged with suspicion of domestic violence, interfering with an officer, and vandalism. We have a new Ustream working now with probably one week of GVTV News episodes looping when we are not live here. We put it on Facebook and you can reach it at www.ustream.tv slash channel slash GVTV dash news. Some other obscure sites are grassvalleytv.vidcaster.com and facebook.com slash GV Digital Media Center. And that's it for local news today. We that's would it like for to local news today. We would like to thank Amy Goodman, Reuters, Associated Press, Reuters, Associated Press, Reuters, Associated Press Reuters, 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 if you have local stories and would like to have them aired on our news, please email us with a limit, 
the story to 750 words. And if you have pictures, please include them in the email to grassvalleytelevision at gmail.com. Please include some type of contact information for verification of facts. You can watch this broadcast on Comcast Cable, NCTV, Channel 11 in Nevada County, 8 a.m., 3 p.m., 7.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m., Saturday, 8 p.m., Sunday, and Southern Link Channel 16 in Truckee and Altacera, same times. We also are streamed on the Internet, NCTV's Digital Media Center website at nevadacountytv.org and our website, gvtv.org. And don't forget Grass Valley Television, a place 24-7 on the net, grassvalleytelevision.com. We post to Facebook, YouTube, blip.tv, and many other sites and have RSS feed and video podcasts on iTunes. Just search under video podcast for GVTV News. Grass Valley Television also videotapes local events around Nevada County. If you have a need for video, you can contact us for more info at grassvalleytelevision at gmail.com or 530-362-8889. This show produced by Grass Valley Television of Rural Counties Television Network. We hope... You will stay tuned to us for this next season as we're going to spice up the news in the future. You can always email us ideas and comments, and if you like us on Facebook, we like that. News player can be embedded on your site, or you can go to our sites, which we already mentioned. Due to the lack of underwriters this year, we will be doing three shows a week, playing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, Sunday editions. We should be expanding when we get more community support. Grass Valley Television works hard to bring you news and entertainment from around the world and local content you do not get on mainstream media. We want to expand and improve what you see and we need your help. If you support this program and want exposure for your business, then this is a win-win situation. Underwriting is important for us. For information, just email us, grassvalleytelevision at gmail.com.